Welcome to Distressed to Joyful, Bailey's Way. I'm your host, Bailey Raber, here to enlighten you and the rest of the world about one of the most misunderstood mental health disorders out there, bipolar disorder. In each episode, we'll learn more about my personal journey with bipolar 2 disorder, how I've struggled with it, and how I've learned to overcome those struggles. Together, we'll laugh, we'll cry, and most importantly, we'll have fun. You'll leave each episode feeling hopeful and stocked full of useful information on how you can better yourself and the world around you. Hello, friends. All right, so I am in Europe right now. Oh, my God. Okay, well, not really. If you are watching on YouTube, you can clearly see that I am not actually in Europe. (laughs) But the day that this podcast episode is releasing is March 20th, and I will be in Europe. I am really excited. And you guys, I need to take a moment to pat myself on the back because I did it. I have finally achieved the scheduling ahead status that Jenna Kutcher preaches about on her podcast. And I feel like a total badass right now. I feel like a total badass right now. So Jenna Kutcher, just a heads up guys, she is a huge marketing guru. I don't even really know what to describe her as. (laughs) But she has a podcast that I've been listening to since like 2018 or 2019. And I actually was able to get my podcast going because of her. I bought an online course that taught me how to do everything I do. I've learned more since then that was not from Jenna. But I will say that one of the things that she talks about is batching and scheduling ahead of time. That way you can make sure you're always on schedule. And I tried that. I tried that for you guys for a while and my depression got in the way and a bunch of other things, a big combination of shit, but depression was the main one, I will say. But I'm really, really excited because I feel like I'm finally at a place in my life where I am able to manage things properly again and I'm able to do this for y'all. Like I'm in fucking Europe as this podcast is being released But you guys are still getting everything. You guys aren't missing out on jack shit because I was able to get my shit together ahead of time. (laughs) So if you are tuning in on release day, I literally am in Europe. But because I've been cooking this stuff up ahead of time, you're getting it. And that's a little redundant. But I'm just so excited. I really am. I'm so happy. No delays. Everything's working out. Yes. Finally. Yes. (laughs) Okay, so have you guys heard of EMDR therapy? So, if you've heard of CBT therapy, which stands for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, then you might have also heard about EMDR therapy, which stands for Eye Movement Desensitization. <laughs> I totally butchered that. Desensitization. I still I still got that wrong. Y'all look it up. Sorry. <laughs> And reprocessing therapy. So eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy. Damn, that's hard. I'm never going to call it that again. It's just going to be EMDR. (laughs) So these two types, CBT and EMDR, are in the same family of different therapies, but they're actually a bit different. So I recently started up EMDR therapy with my therapist. Uh, My therapist has been a therapist, or excuse me, she's been my therapist for over 11 years now. And she got certified in EMDR maybe a couple years ago. I'm not sure how long ago, but that is an extra certification that they have to get. Not just anybody can do that. And we've been doing EMDR to help me process and heal from years or more like decades, actually, of family trauma, everybody's favorite. So to be transparent, I'm still very much in the messy middle of all of this, meaning that I'm still processing this type of therapy, EMDR, what it's doing for me. So I'm not ready to speak on this subject. But I did want to bring it up as this is a topic that I will discuss in the future just not until I've had more time to process what's going on. So that way I can speak from a place of authenticity, not a place of hurt. 
So in case y'all didn't know this or didn't realize this, I tend to discuss topics here that I've already been able to process because I want to speak from a place of understanding and self-discovery and awareness, not a place of hurt. I really don't like to speak from a place of hurt. Just in my experience, a place of hurt is not a good place to speak from, which is why I've really got into journaling and being able to process my thoughts and emotions through that. We will talk about that here later. Actually, we're going to have a whole episode on that soon. But I did want to bring this up because I did my first ever EMDR session back in the summer, I believe. Yeah, I think it was summer. We focused on my car accidents. So if you haven't already, please tune in to, ooh, I believe it's season two. I will put the episode in the show notes. But there is an episode that is Reckless Driving and Bipolar Disorder. I know that that's the title. And I talk about all the car accidents that I have been in and caused since I was 16. So I'm going to knock on some wood real fast. Because I haven't been in a car accident since 2017. But that doesn't mean that I didn't have any PTSD from that. Because that shit's traumatic, guys. It really is. So we started by focusing on that because that's kind of easy stuff in comparison to years and years and decades of family trauma. So I did notice a really good improvement. And I'm bringing this up because if you've heard of EMDR and you're not quite sure about it, Talk to your therapist, especially if they're certified in it, talk to them about it because I have already seen a difference in how I react to things and how my body reacts to things from the place of the car accidents. That's a really easy one to kind of notice my triggers. So I might be getting ahead of myself here, so we are going to stop that at the moment. Also, triggers, a question, do you guys really understand triggers and what those are and how those affect us? I'm asking because there might be an episode about that sometime soon. So feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram at distressed to joyful underscore Bailey's way to let me know your thoughts on triggers. What do you know about triggers? Do you have any certain triggers that you know of? Are you working on finding out your triggers? Do you have no idea what that is and you're really curious now? Send me a message. Let's get a conversation going. Okay, let's move into today's episode, my personal experiences with bipolar medications. So before we get started, there is a warning. This is a huge warning and I need you all to really understand this and take this in. I am not talking about the medications I've been on in order to recommend them. That is not what I'm doing whatsoever. I'm not going to talk about the dosages. I'm not going to list that off. And I'm not giving this to you so you can write down a list of things that you want to go try out and take to your psychiatrist. That is not what we are doing here. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, they um, No. <laughs> no, we're not doing this. So what we are doing is I am going to describe how I felt and what my experiences were on these specific medications because... I did not always have great experiences. And here's the thing. It sucked. It sucked trying out medications and not knowing if what I was feeling was the same as what somebody else felt. It sucked trying things out and not knowing whether or not it was working. It sucked. It felt alone. And I would hate for other people to have to feel alone through this kind of thing because this is not a fun process to go through. I have talked with a couple friends in recent years who have actually been on the same medications as me. And guys, to hear their experiences and see them line up with my experiences, oh, it was seriously such a relief. It was just very validating to know that, okay, it wasn't just me. Good. Okay. Woo. I'm not... Nothing's going on with me that's out of the ordinary because other people have experienced it too. And these kind of things are important, guys. That is why I am here is to get the conversation going and to help you guys know that you're not alone through these things. And hey, you might have tried some of these meds and had a completely different experience than me, and that's okay too. That is okay. We are all different. All of our bodies react to things differently, and 
uh, you know, but sometimes they act the same. <laughs> and so that is, that is kind of good to know. And that's my opinion on the subject. So again, I'm not recommending shit. I'm not going to write down the names of these things in the show notes. I'm not going to spell shit out. I'm really not. I don't want to get that into it because again, I'm just coming from this is what I experienced and that's it. Okay. Okay. So now that we have gotten that disclaimer all the way the fuck out there, I, if you're on YouTube, you'll get to see this, but I have a, something special with me. It is my journal. Yes, so uh, you can see the back side of it and the, you know, the front and the back, but I'm not showing you the inside. <laughs> I'll read from the inside, though. So interesting enough, a couple... God, almost two months, a month and a half ago, I'd say now. Yeah, about a month and a half ago, I sat down with a new psychiatrist. I needed someone new, someone closer by. I didn't feel like, okay, first of all, let me, let me just start by saying that the last psychiatrist office that I went to, I loved my psychiatrist. I really did. But I did not love his office staff. They were terrible to me. The drive was like 40 minutes, if not more, with traffic. And to make things worse, his schedule was like totally conflicting with mine. So it just didn't work out. And so that sucks. But you know what? That's why there's a bunch of other doctors. And thankfully, I live in a metropolitan area. So I was able to find someone new. Mona actually sat down with me and we looked through a bunch and we finally found one. And I'm really glad because so far it's been great. I had my first appointment with her on, I think it was January 31st. It definitely was January 31st where she adjusted my meds a bit and I'm telling you this because my therapist brought up something that she wanted me to do as like homework before I went to this appointment. My therapist wanted me to write out all of my psychiatric history in terms of medications because that would make the visit so much smoother. And guys, Chelsea was right. So if you're here, you're listening, you're trying to go find a new doctor right now, I highly recommend you do what my therapist told me to do, which is write out your own history of shit and keep it on hand. Keep it somewhere where you can access it easily, maybe notes on your phone. Me personally, I like to write at the end of the day, sitting in bed when I'm done with my phone for the day. So I use my journal and hand write shit and take photos of it for later if necessary. But I literally wrote it all out because Chelsea was like, you don't want to waste time with her. This is valuable time. And so if you have everything written down, you are cutting out all of the ums. Let me think about it. Give me a second. Let me rack my brain. Because you already did all that. You already did that. You're going to get to the important things that matter and not waste the precious time. Because we all know psychiatrists don't give us as much time as we probably want. <laughs> So I am going to mention dates and whatnot, and I'm, I don't think I'm going to mention names. I really don't think that that's necessary either. I mean, also, I'm in Houston. How many of y'all are actually in Houston seeing the same people as me? Probably very few. So I first saw my very first psychiatrist back in, it was like April or May of 2010, so at that time is when I was diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder. If you guys have tuned into the diagnosis, which is I think episode 3 of season 1, like super far back, if you haven't listened to it, I mean you can, but the audio is going to be shit compared to what it is now, so just be prepared. <laughs> So he placed me on Abilify and he had me on a very, very small dosage of this and he ended up increasing it over time. So I had to take Abilify in the morning because when I took it in the evenings, guys, I couldn't sleep. I remember taking it and just not being able to fall asleep till like three or four in the morning. And dude, I was in high school back then. I had to get up for school. That was not gonna work. That was not gonna fly. And so I ended up telling him that and then we switched it to morning time and that's what worked for me because for some reason it just, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep if I took it in the night. I also will say that I really felt no positive effects while taking it whatsoever. So here's a couple of things. First of all, I was 16 back then. 
I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I honestly didn't have a lot to gauge on. I wasn't journaling. I wasn't doing healthy things for myself. So I was not in a really good place to sit down and analyze these things because I was just hurt. I was mentally broken and I just needed help. I did. And I didn't really know. So what I ended up doing, guys, which I do not recommend, is I remember sitting in the psychiatrist's office going back for, you know, follow-ups and all that nonsense. and Nonsense. Okay, sorry. This is important stuff. Let me not downplay it. <laughs> so I remember going for follow-ups and he'd ask me questions about, like, is it making you feel this way or that way or whatever? And I really didn't know. So a lot of times I just either said, I don't know, or I just made something up because I, I was there. I was spending my parents' money on this stuff, and I felt like it should be helping. And maybe that even though it wasn't helping me, I, sh I shouldn't tell him that because, I mean, I'm here. He's supposed to be helping me. And so, guys, the point I'm bringing up is, you need to tell the truth. If it's not helping you, fucking say so so they can find something that will. Because I spent a lot of years on Abilify. A lot of years. Let me tell you how many years. Hold on. I spent almost eight years taking Abilify and literally felt nothing change. Again, there's another thing I need to point out. And that's the fact that while I was taking this medication... I was also heavily drinking, and you're not supposed to drink while you take psychiatric medications. The majority of them. There's probably some that don't count, but Abilify specifically, they told me don't drink while you're taking it. What did I do? I drank because I was a shithead 16-year-old who was also depressed and really didn't know better. So, I mean, it is what it is. But then I also lied to the psychiatrist about it, which I, again, do not recommend. So this went on for a while. I mean, I even, when I moved to Houston in 2014, so that was, you know, four years of seeing the same doctor down in my hometown. I found a new doctor in Houston, and she kept me on the same thing. Once again, no positive effects. No negative effects either, thankfully. I did gain weight, but also <laughs> I was not exercising. I was drinking all the time and I was eating shit food all the time. So I have not much to gauge on if this was working or if this wasn't working because I wasn't taking care of myself. And guys, that is a key thing right there. I wasn't taking care of myself because I do understand that it is hard to take care of yourself while you're depressed. I totally understand that. But I literally was making no effort. No effort whatsoever. It took me until my quarter life crisis breakdown when I was 25 to actually make an effort into taking care of myself. And that is when I was able to kind of look at these things. So speaking of, let's flash forward to 2018 when I started seeing yet a different doctor here in Houston. So I told this doctor about my feelings with Abilify, and he suggested that I try out Lamictal. Y'all, Lamictal for me was so fucking awful. It was awful. I was a raging bitch full of anger that I unleashed onto anyone who got in my way all the fucking time while I was on this shit. The whole time. It was so miserable. It was so miserable, guys. And, you know, I remember specifically one situation where I was just so mad and it was about traffic or somebody cutting me off in traffic or driving like an asshole, which happens every fucking day here in Houston. But I remember being so angry and I called my mom to vent, which was stupid on my part. When looking back, I like that the moment where I learned that I can no longer count on her or call her for anything which not going to get into it right now but like the, it took till this moment to learn that but like this moment is a big moment 
So I remember explaining to her on the phone what was going on. And I was angry, guys. I was so fucking angry at whatever happened. So I was yelling. I was mad. And I have anger problems, guys. I really do. You've you've listened. If you've listened to, you know, Anger Management Bailey's Way or any of these podcasts, you'll know that I have problems with anger. And so because I was mad, I was screaming and yelling. And you know what my mom did? She hung up on me. She literally was like, I can't help you. I can't deal with this. Goodbye. And like hung up on me, which then made everything worse because my anger that was directed at the traffic and whatever happened outside, which was all balled up from Lamictal, was now being focused on my mom. Because I'm like, what the fuck? I called you because I need to vent this out. Like I can't contain this any longer. And you fucking hang up on me. So I called my friend Derek. And I love Derek. Derek is a redhead like me. He's a lot more redhead. But he also deals with some anger things. I'm so sorry, Derek, if I shouldn't be saying that. But Derek and I laugh at (laughs) the fact that sometimes when we get mad, we'll, like, go break shit. Like, you just get some some glass or porcelain, more like ceramic, some ceramic um, plates and cups and bowls. Fucking smash that shit. It feels so good to release. So I called Derek because I knew Derek would understand where I was coming from. And guys, Derek was an absolute godsend because I was angry and I was able to get it all out. And not only did he not judge me for any of it, he was also able to just sit there and hold the space while I fucking ripped a new one to the person in traffic and to my mom. And these people could not hear what was going on, but it was so intense I remember it feeling so fucking intense and I remember afterwards just like you know crying from relief that I was able to get all of that out and then apologizing to Derek for calling him to fucking yell and vent about this shit and him saying hey dude no big deal like I get it it's totally fine and just that was it (laughs) Derek has seriously been a great friend if you're listening right now dude I really appreciate you and our friendship but yeah that's what Lamicta was like for me feeling super obnoxiously angry about little things all the time for no fucking reason. That's what Lamicta was, and it fucking sucked, and it was so bad. I remember calling up to the doctor's office and trying to get a hold and trying to get off of it, and he just kept wanting to up the dosage. He just kept wanting to up the dosage, and it was so bad. I couldn't take this shit anymore that finally I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to continue to see someone who won't listen to me. And so I literally stopped going to his office and I stopped taking my medication immediately, which was a horrible thing to do. Y'all learn from my mistakes. Do not abruptly stop taking your medication. That is terrible for you on for so many reasons. So many reasons. So at that point, I was still in contact with my mom, and so she was able to help me find a different psychiatrist, which is the one I recently stopped seeing, and she was able to squeeze me in last minute because she was going there, and so they got me in for a last minute new patient appointment, and this doctor put me on something different. So I explained the situation, and guys, actually, let me pause for a second. If you're seeing a psychiatrist who is not listening to you, If you are telling them, hey, I don't think this is working or this is making me feel this way and it doesn't feel great and you feel that they're not listening to you or they're just like, oh, no, it's fine. And they brush you off and they keep you on it or they want to keep increasing it. Please understand and know you are not required to stay with that doctor. You are allowed to go shopping for doctors. Yeah, that's a fucking thing. I don't know if I've talked about that before, but that's 100 percent a thing. You can go shop around, find somebody who's going to listen to you, who vibes with you, who is actually there to understand what's going on with you and who wants to help you. Because not all doctors just want to help you. It's sad. I've worked in doctor's offices, so I know. Not all doctors out there are actually looking out for your best interests. Some of them are just looking for a paycheck or for you know, more insurance claims to write. And it's shitty and it's sad, but that's the reality of living in the United States. So if you feel like your psychiatrist really isn't listening to you and what you need, you are welcome to go find another one. Please know that. Please know that. 
So then I went to this new psychiatrist who put me on oxcarbazepine, which is the generic name. It's triliptal is the non-generic, the non-generic name. Guys, I have been on this since early 2019 and I have not known the actual name. I've only known it as the generic name this entire fucking time. January of this year, when I went to see my newest psychiatrist who I'm going to be sticking with, she explained to me that I've been on triliptal this whole time. And I was like, what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> I've been on this generic for so long and I, I didn't know. I had no fucking idea what the actual name is, but that's okay. And guys, I've been on generics for basically all of these heads up. I basically, all of these meds, I've done generics. It's cheaper. There's nothing wrong with it. You don't have to have the name brand. If your insurance covers it, fuck yeah, I'm happy for you. You do you and you get that name brand. But I don't have insurance, so I'm going to get what I can afford, and that's the generic. That is 100% the generic. So I was doing okay when I started seeing this new psychiatrist. I mean, I had gotten off of the lamictal I was feeling a lot better since I pulled myself off of it which again I do not recommend do not follow my footsteps that was a mistake and so um the oxcarbazepine the triliptal is actually what I'm on still today and it is a mood stabilizer and so this one for me has actually helped significantly I have less mood swings and I have less I have less outbursts when I'm taking my meds on the reg. And this newest doctor that I started seeing, she actually upped my dosage because what I was on previously was very low and she was like, you need more. And I'm like, yeah, I do need more. Life is different now and things are crazy. But this new psychiatrist also recognized that I am showing really strong signs of an anxiety disorder and PTSD on top of my bipolar 2 disorder. So that's a lot. Like, that's a lot. And so what I really like about her, guys, is that she listens. And I was telling her about, you know, my PTSD from car wrecks, my PTSD from family trauma, and all of these things. And she was listening. And she actually recommended The Body Keeps the Score, which I kind of chuckled. And I was like, oh, I've already read that book. Like, I'm one step ahead, lady, but thank you. <laughs> She also mentioned EMDR therapy, and I was like, yep, I'm starting that with my therapist too, no biggie. And so it was really nice, though, because I am on this track with my therapist, and she aligns with that. Like, my psychiatrist who has never met or talked with my therapist, they're on the same track with me, which is also super reassuring to know that, okay, I'm on the right track for healing, this healing process, which is not an easy one gonna take a lot longer than I initially expected but hey that's the journey and that's life and that's what we got to do so because of my anxiety she actually added something else which I don't have the name of that and I don't even care to give it anyways <laughs> but she added a beta blocker so if any of you guys have seen the new seasons of the Kardashians. I know if you're looking at me on YouTube, I'm like, oh yes, you can see me like cringing a little bit because I have watched both of them, season one and season two. Y'all, in my eyes, they were the Kardashians with the keeping up with the Kardashians, but nowadays, I like them a little more. I still don't love them, don't get me wrong, I still don't love them, but they're a lot, they progressed as people and They've actually started doing some really good work, which I really love. But Chloe talks openly about therapy all the time on the show, which I love, guys. I fucking love that. And she takes beta blockers a lot for her anxiety. And that's what I was given, beta blockers, which apparently are really common for people who do performances that are live, um, like musicians, people who do public speaking. Like, this is a normal thing. And I'm just sitting here like, wow, this could have been handy a while back. But hey, better late than never. And I'm honestly really glad that she brought up this idea. And it's a take-as-needed thing. I don't take them every day. If I know I'm going into something that's going to be high anxiety and high stressful, I'll take one. Or if I'm feeling super anxious in the moment because of something happening with Monish or being triggered by something, 
I'll go take one. But otherwise, it's literally just when I need them. And I've been very, very, very strict about that. And also, she made sure to give me non-addictive types, which to me, that is super important. I do not want to be addicted to anything. I don't want to feel like I have to have something else on top of the shit that I already have to have. Y'all, I am the type, I want to be on as little meds as possible. And I discussed that with my psychiatrist when we sat down for the first time. I don't want to be chalked up on five different things. I don't want to have to rely on all of these meds to be a human being. I do need help. I do, which is why I take a twice daily now medication. But I don't feel like I need to be zombied out in order to do that. And so, but that's just for me personally. That is for me personally. You might be different. Your significant other might be different. Your mom might be different. Everybody around is probably different and that's okay. I'm not telling you about all of this so that you can do exactly the same path as me. That's not what we're doing here. What I hope to inspire you is to know that I had to try a couple different things until I found what worked. Because what I'm on right now, guys, it fucking works. Like, I wish I would have found this sooner, but again, better late than never. And it took time. I had to see. You have to be on some of these for a while to actually see if it's doing anything. And that is okay. That is okay. So if you're tuning in right now and you've struggled even a little bit with trying to find the right meds, please know that you're not alone. This is oftentimes the case for all of us. It's not like we just try one thing and magically it works all of a sudden right on the first go. Now, I'm sure that does happen for some people, but the percentage of that people is probably really tiny in comparison to the population of people who are on psychiatric meds. (laughs) So just a couple key takeaways from today. Shop around for your doctor. If you are not happy with how your doctor is treating you or not treating you, if you are telling them things and you feel like they're not listening, most specifically, if you feel like they are not listening to you, shop around and try try to find someone new. Look at their reviews, guys. Look at these doctor reviews, especially if you have insurance like Cigna, for instance. Cigna, people can leave reviews about doctors, and if you have access to that, look look at them. Look at them. Look at Psychology Today, where you can read more about their background. Get on Google and see what people say about the doctors. Like, check these things out. Do your research, do your homework, and find somebody new if whoever you're with isn't working for you. Also, just be okay with trying something new. If whatever you're on isn't working for you, that's okay. Try something else. And if you have to try 20 different things until you find the one that actually works, that's fucking okay. I think I got pretty lucky with only having to try three different things until I found what worked. (laughs) That's probably pretty lucky because I don't know how many psychiatric meds are out there. Ooh, I said that funny. Psychiatric meds. But I feel like there's probably a bunch and that This is a very normal thing, guys, to have to go through a couple different ones to find what works best for you. And lastly, just know that if you are in this transition and you're trying to find what works for you, you're not alone. You really, truly are not alone. I know I'm not alone. There's plenty of other people that have gone through this besides just me. So, yeah. Just stay positive you know, keep on trying. Don't give up and just know that you will find what works for you. Just don't give up, okay? Alrighty, y'all. So the win of the week segment was created for you. Yes, you as a way for all of us together to spread some positivity and share a good thing that happened in life recently. Whether it be that you received a job offer to the company of your dreams or that you finally gained the energy to shower for the first time in three days, no win is too small or, yeah, no win is too small and here on Distress the Joyful Bailey's Way, we celebrate all wins equally. Also, this is your opportunity for a shout out on the show and y'all should know by now how much I love giving shout outs. 
So today we have an anonymous submission from the website that reads, I got back photos from my engagement photo shoot this week and I cried. My fiance looks so beautiful in these photos and you can see the love she has for me in her eyes. It was so fun to look at these photos with her that we will cherish forever. Y'all, that is so fucking sweet. I don't know who wrote that in, but that is so sweet and I love it. Whoever you are, I'm so happy for you. This is such a beautiful thing. Marriage is such a beautiful thing and I'm happy for you. Oh my God, yay. I should do like snaps for, but also I don't know your name and all y'all probably haven't seen Legally Blonde, so. <laughs> Well, do you have a recent win that you want to share with me? Send in your submissions by heading on over to whatishaybalesdoing.com slash win of the week. You can also send in your submissions directly to my DMs on Instagram at distressed to joyful underscore Bailey's way. All right, so in the next episode, we are going to talk about the importance of writing things out. Yes. Again, if you're on YouTube, you can see my journal here that I write so much shit out in. Oh my God. Huh, yes. Remember how I talked at the beginning of the... Uh, <laughs> Remember how I talked at the beginning of this episode about how I've been journaling to process my thoughts and emotions? Well, friends, that's exactly what we're going to discuss in the next episode. So be sure to check it out. You don't want to miss it. Thank you for tuning into the show. Be sure to follow the show on Instagram and Facebook at distressed to joyful underscore Bailey's way and head on over to the website. What is heybalesdoing.com to check out the show notes from this episode. If you enjoy this podcast, help spread the word and leave a rating or write a review, especially if you're on Apple podcast, because y'all, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you guys think. I really, truly do. Also, you can watch this episode for free on YouTube if I haven't mentioned that enough by now. Lastly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all of the new episode releases. But until next time, take it easy, stay grateful, and be joyful. Bye!